C-sharp, like most languages, has a random number generator built into it. And by default, that random number generator is an object called random. And that random object is seeded by default using, I believe, the system clock. So that's based on the date and the exact millisecond in time uses those values to generate a list of random numbers. So I have a button here in this little random number generator uh, example that if I click, it's going to generate a number between 1 and 100. So I click and I get 21. I click again, I get 4. I click again, 51, 96, 11, and so forth. And I can generate a whole bunch of unique numbers here. And if you kind of look at those numbers, you'll see that, you know, 21, 4, 51, you can probably remember those three. And I'm going to stop this and start it again. If I just clear the list, I'm still pulling up numbers from that random number generator. So I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to restart it. Okay, so this time when I click the generate number button, I get different numbers. And again, I can do a whole bunch of these, and these are simply randomly generated from that random object. I'm going to close this application, and let's talk a little bit about the code to do this. We can create a random object, just like creating a data type variable, except now we're using an object reference to the random class. And I called mine RND. Uh, you might call it Jerry or Sally. I use RND for random, equals, and then we have this phrase of new, random, and parentheses. This is what we call a constructor. We'll talk more about the constructors when we get into creating classes, but what this does, it creates a new instance of the random object and assigns that object the name RND. I could actually have multiple random objects here and just give them different names, each time referring to the new random, and because based on milliseconds, they would each be different. My suggestion is to make this a class level object, just like we declare class level variables. I would do this outside of any of my methods at the very top of my code within that form one class designation. Then when you want to use this, if you want to generate a, an integer, I would declare an integer variable. I called mine my, my number. And then my number equals our RND object dot. And we're going to use the next method. And the next method, we can tell it's a method that's got parentheses. And inside those parentheses, we put the upper bounds of the range that we want to generate a number from. It's going to go from 0 to this number, but this number is not inclusive. So next, 100 generates a number between 0 and 99. If I wanted a number between 1 and 100, I would simply add 1. Because if it generates 0 and I add 1, that's 1. If it generates a 99 and I add 1, that's 100. And every time I call this RND next 100 plus 1, I'm going to get a, a value that's randomly generated between 0 and 100. Now, there might be some times when you can use a double value rather than integer value. I would say most times when I'm using um, a random number, it's usually in playing some type of game or running some type of test, I usually want integers. But there might be a time when you want a double value. And so we can do the same thing. Here I declared double XYZ. By the way, I could have said int my number equals RND next 100. I could have done that all in one line. So I did it on one line here, double XYZ, XYZ being a variable of double type, equals RND, and now I use the dot next double method. Nothing goes in the parentheses here, but it's going to generate a value between 0, 0.0 and 1.0. And those are going to be exclusive. So a type of number it might generate would be 0 0.582018392611417. It's about a 15 or 16 digit decimal value that was generated. And we might take that number and multiply it by something else uh, in doing some testing where we want double values. Well, let's take a look at the code in C Sharp for our little random number demo project that I just showed you earlier. So here's my project. I'm going to pull my properties window over. 
and you can see that I have a button here named BTN generate. The text is generate number. Actually it's generate number and then I have in parentheses 1 to 100. Let's stretch this out a little bit so you can see that. So that's the text we have on this on this button. Then we have a button named BTN clear list and of course the text is clear list. And then I have a text box, txt num list. Now this one is a multi-line text box. So I set the multi-line to true and the scroll bars to vertical, which gives me this vertical scroll bar and I can have more than one line of text in here that I'm gonna generate as I click this generate number. Let's take a look at that code. I'm gonna bring my properties back over here and redock it. And let's take a look at the code for that generate number button. So as I mentioned earlier, I created a random object, a new instance of a random object, and named it RND. And I did that up here above my public form, but within the partial class of form one. So this random object belongs in form one. And I did it up here for a simple reason in that I can put a number inside these parentheses and see this, so that every time it runs, it comes up with the same random numbers kind of defeats the purpose, so there might be times for testing purposes uh, we always want to have the same random numbers being generated in the same order. I reference that then in my BTN generate click event handler. And I just put a, a comment here that random RND is referenced above as a class level object. Same code we had earlier, I'm going to create my number as an integer, my number equals RND next 100 plus 1. And then we'll come back and look at the double value here in a minute. I commented that out. But here I have txt numlist.txt plus equals. I'm going to concatenate to that. My number dot two string. And then I put a D2 in here, so it was always two digits. So if it came up as a single digit, like one through nine, then it would put a zero in front of that. And that's what the D2 does there. And I'm going to add a few spaces behind that. And once again, I'm going to run this. So I'm generating list, there's my first number. I get a couple spaces after it. Second number, third number, fourth number, and so forth. And I can generate a whole bunch of these. They're gonna wrap and go down my text box. And if I wanted to clear, I can click the clear list button. And all that's doing is clearing the txt num list. Now let's go ahead and seed this number. So I can put a value inside the parentheses when I'm constructing my random object and that specifies the seed number to use rather than the system clock. And so every time I run my program, I'm gonna get the same list of random numbers. I'm gonna go back to Visual Studio and I'm gonna do that here. I'm gonna put 500. And I'm going to run this. So now I'm getting 94, 53, 27, 28, 95. Now if I clear the list and go again, I'm going to get different numbers because I'm still using the same random number generator. My program is still running. It's simply pulling from the list of an extensive list of integers that it created when we created that object. But if I were to come back and run it again, I'm gonna get those same numbers, 94, 53, 27, 28, 95. So it's rare that I seed my random number generator. Usually I wanna use the system clock, but it is there. And where you might see seeding happening is in the code for a game like Free Cell from Microsoft, a solitaire game. When you're playing a game and it randomly generates the game cards for that game, it's a card solitaire game, so it randomly generates the order of the cards using a random number generator, but they also keep track, and it's doing that using an, an integer value here that's also randomly created, but they keep track of what that number is. So if you want to replay the same game, you have an opportunity to enter that seed number and it will generate the same game again. In most cases, though, we're going to use the 
algorithm of the system clock and time. Oh, we mentioned the uh, the double. So I'm going to create a double value here as well. So this time we're going to use double xyz equals rnd dot next double. This can be a value between 0 and 255. And I'm going to get rid of the d2 here since this is a double value. And we want to show xyz. It's still going to generate our rnd. I could comment that out. I'm not going to bother. It's just not going to display that value. But let's start. So here, I click generate number. It's no longer 1 to 100. It's now going to be a double value. And there's 1, 2, 3, so forth. Each number is very unique. And I'll click the list. And if you wanted to have that be in a range, say, from 0 to 10, well, I could take that value and um, multiply it by... 10, and we'll start this again. And now I'm getting values between 0 and 10, and 10 being exclusive. So that's how random number generators work in C Sharp. They're very simple to use. Just declare your random number object and then reference its next method or next double method and do some math if you need it. We'll use this in a video. Um, coming up very shortly, I think there's two videos from now, on how to create a dice roller project.